three, two, one. Hello, my name's Rebel Dragon ninety five. Uh, this is uh, Dragon Fable, a uh, quite an old uh, Flash game from uh, early two thousands, like two thousand five to two thousand six. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing a run of kind of the first story arc of um, of uh, the game. So uh, timing starts when I click on book one, two. So if you're ready on time, we'll go in three, two, one, go. All right. So this is an R6 Entertainment game. Um, yeah, it's very old. It's from when I was a lot younger. So, but yeah. So uh, this is this is uh, made. This was made after the first game, which was Adventure Quest, and it's kind of the prequel to Adventure Quest in the timeline. Oh yeah, this is Ryan, by the way. I remade our lovely blue blonde-haired man. Uh, yeah. So book one is kind of like the big. Uh, the big story arc thing in this, but we're, we're going to play basically the first mini arc within it where we get our dragon out. Right. I did mention that this is a Flash game. You might be wondering how I can still play a Flash game. Uh, this game, when Flash got discontinued by uh, everyone, uh, Arctic Entertainment made their own kind of launcher thing. And all their games still work within the launcher, so you can play all of them, including Adventure Quest, Mech Quest, all, every game that they've ever made, you can play through that launcher. So yeah, you can play all of them if you want to. And go back and experience the absolute uh, weirdness that is these old games. All right, this is the first bit of combat. This is a gorilla film. We're just gonna hit this guy a few times. Oh yeah, we have to hit the red twilly back because uh, we don't need twilly. Really just gets in the way. If I'm lucky, this might be a three-turner. Oh, it was. Hell yes. Oh. Right. So. At some point, they added keyboard controls in this game, uh, where you get to uh, basically skip that cutscene there by just walking through the cutscene. Right, what we're going to do now is we're going to quickly buy the thing that basically breaks the game in half for us for a little bit. Uh, guest. Uh, invite first, invite second. I don't need my drag. I haven't got it. Right. Dimensional transfer. All right, now we're we're now a stick man. Uh, so the armor I just put on and brought was the dimensional trans phaser, which is a uh, basically a joke armor that they put in the game. Um, but the thing is, early on, it's actually really really good until you hit like level forty something because its damage is set, so it's always strong regardless of what your stats are. Your stats don't matter when when you're wearing this. So you can pretty much cheese the entirety of early game with it. If uh, you choose to. End of that quest. Oh yeah, that was Drakaf. We we won't worry about him for a second. Right, we're going to quickly remove add add back. Right, so. Now we're going to go Shorewood Forest. Uh, what I just did there is I used a, a, uh, a menu in, in this game called The Book. Uh, if you've played this game before, I actually just skipped an entire boss fight section and quests and stuff. Because, yeah, we, 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 we don't want to play that. You could just skip it by going in the book and, telepo and teleporting to where you need to go. So we're going to do that. Right, so that's the regular attack of the Stickman. We're just going to wobble over everything uh, with uh, with the wobble sounds. You might have noticed I also put party members into my party. Party members are useful in the in the speedrun side of this game because, um, because they help you with doing damage. The downside of having partners if you're playing this game casually is you get less EXP and money by having partners and it decreases how much you get based on how many party members you have because it makes the game a lot easier basically right we're level five something else about party members is party members don't level up when you level up the only way they level up is by you removing them from the party and then going back into the party menu and like re-equipping them so we're gonna do that another time throughout the run as uh we get through Right, there we go. Wobble, wobble. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, I also have a sword. And that was no bueno on that. All right. Doesn't matter too much. We're just going to wobble on this guy again. It didn't defeat him, no. Right, there we go. I'm going to level up again. That's a pretty bad quest, actually, not going to lie. 
There we go. Let's put there. Now, cool. Right, now, this is a kind of a, like a, a monster hunting quest uh, where we have to go just murder a bunch of creatures in absolute cold blood for uh, Rabina, who's one of the famous battle on char characters. She's like a uh, ranger character. And she's like, can you go murder all these creatures for me? And we're just like, yeah, sure. All this to get inside the box. So inside the black box that um, she's basically holding hostage while we go and do her chores for her is supposedly, our, is supposedly a, a dragon egg of some kind. So that's, so that's why we're trying to get into it. Oh, nice crit. Something else about the um, dimensional transphaser, which is the stick man armor I've got on, is that it's actually, like, it's DPS is actually, like, as I said, really nice. Uh, getting crits like that is, like, what you want to see. Because it ensures you get, like, kills on everything. Oh, yeah, this is a Unicuga. We're just going to, like, try it. Now we got to go over here. Get stuck on the tree. Yeah, so at some point they had a key, like, normally this game was played with only, um, mouse you clicked everywhere. But at some point they added keyboard controls to this game. I don't know when that got added into this game, but so the keyboard controls are a little bit weird in this game, but they do make things a little bit faster. Than, like, not using them. So we just have to put up with the weirdness of them. Right. Yeah, uh, something else, like... <laughs> being the sick man in this just takes me back to, like... Like old like new ground stuff of like stick men fighting each other. That's always a fun thing to remember with that. Alright, there we go. Uh Dragon Ball. Yay. It's Dracaf again. Dracaf wants the dragon egg inside the box. So we're, we're just gonna be we're just gonna beat him up again, don't worry about it. Uh, nice, yeah, got the kill there. So um much like any um Pokemon style Thing. The entire goal of every combat in this is we're trying to reduce the amount of turns. Oh, yeah, by the way, the box is empty because it got lost on amount of trash. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's how it works. Don't worry about it. Um, heal. Then we're going to go into guests. Guests. I invite. Go back one. Orb Saga. And again, we're going to skip the... Uh, uh, again, we have skipped the... Uh, the Hydra boss fight because uh, uh, we don't need to do it. We could just skip it with the... With, uh, the bot. Oh god, I don't, I don't do not want to leave the quest. We can skip it by just going in the book. Oh, my damage was not good there. Alright. Also, like, something else with the early, this early co content in this game, is that, like, there's just, sometimes it's just not music, because they didn't have music in, like, a lot of the things back, back in this era of the game. But they added music in some places, Really weird like the music's in some places and some of the cutscenes in this are really really well animated for being like a flash game from like mid mid 2000s all right also like with the book as well um used to if you wanted party members the reason why party members weren't as good way 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 back in the day when i was playing this when i was a kid i never used them is because um you had to go and get them whenever you wanted them. When they added the book, they added the ability to just grab them from wherever, which is why they're just abused everywhere in, like, when, like, you do speedruns in this game. Because you may as well just abuse them. Oh no, Vol Dragon took it. Fork. West. Go. Okay. Now we gotta go fight the big dragon thing. Big vulture, right? Well, we've got to go through some doors. Uh, these doors have a set path. We just, oh, I'm, oh, I know the set path for the doors. So we just go through all the right doors. Oh, Artix. Artix with the low damage roll. SMH Artix. Oh, the crit helped though. Thank you, Artix. I don't know why, like, Arctic is, Arctic's damage ranges are so wild in this game. He either does no damage or he does, like, all the damage. We're gonna use Pure. Pure's just, like, a big, beefy boy attack. And then we're gonna... Go, and we have completed that quest. So now we're gonna go back in the book, Orb Saga, Timeline. Oh, that's the wrong one. Uh, Orb Saga, Timeline, we need to go breakfast. 
We press the wrong one. Right, here you go. Here's Warlick. Warlick's Warlick's a wizard. We're gonna enter his tent and watch out scene where he where he speaks to us about egg, and then he's gonna make a uh, giant fried egg for us, and we're gonna talk about more egg related subjects, and then we're gonna leave. Right now, he, we're gonna do a bunch of stuff for him because he needs um because he needs certain things to summon a creature in order to determine which egg is the right egg. So in between all this, we we collected a we, we because because the Vol Dragon had a bunch of eggs that looked exactly the same. We we have to summon a creature in order to determine which is the real dragon egg. So we gotta go around and collect some stuff. So then we know which egg is the true egg for us. We need to find the egg. And to do that, we gotta run through a bunch of rooms, punching these laundry golems, spider monkey things, and bug bears. Luckily, uh, Artix is pretty good here. He does a lot of damage. Oh, it's a sock monkey. Sorry. Because he's got socks on his hands. Well, that was a bit of a good crit there, but not an amazing crit. Oh, nice job, Artix. All right. Sock monkey. Oh, one HP wonder. Bruh. All right. Laundry golem. There we go. Got a couple more enemies to fight, and then we get the big book with the S on it. It looks like, uh... Oh, one HP wonder again. All right, here we go. All right, here's the big bugbear. The booger boss, and we're going to use pure on him. And now here's the book with the big C on it. There we go. And we're going to go uh, to this guy, Dragon it Flames. Right, so... In this part of the game, uh, there are these elemental caves with like big long quests in them and such. Um, so we need to go into a couple of these. This is the fire test one where there's a bunch of fire based enemies. Uh, you don't. So the item we need is in this dungeon, but we don't actually need to beat the dungeon. We just need to collect the item and then leg it out of here. But you can't really do that quickly unless you go back to the start of the dungeon, unless you use a different teleport method that I that I'll do in a second. Also shout us the music in this bit, it's kinda of fire. Shock. That'll stun him for a turn. That's a good turn. Sometimes this fight here can have three enemies in it. Uh, sometimes the fights in this game are kinda of random with what they give you. So um yeah, it's kind of annoying sometimes. This enemy is always one. There's Then the next one's one, and then we have three enemies in the one afterwards. Three or four. Oh, no, this is the one with three. And then the last one, I should only have one. Go. Shock. Go. Oh, really? Oh, there's three this time. Yeah, as I said, sometimes it's not consistent. You have enemies you have to fight. It's kind of an RNG factor in some of the things in this game. Right, now here's the item we need. This is the strength ba bag of fire yarn. And because we can't leave it quickly, we're just going to teleport to hometown. And then we're then going to walk back past the... Uh, walk, walk back past the same uh, boss fight we've been skipping this entire time. Because imagine fighting a boss. Right, now we got to go to the rock cave. The earth cave is up here. Right, the Earth Cave's kind of annoying. The Earth Cave has a random layout every time you come in here. So I hope to God I get a good one, because you can actually lose a sizable amount of time to a bad rock cave layout. This is standard, currently, with what you usually get. Also, the music here makes it very ominous as well. It's quite amusing. Oh, we just had music in the Fire Cave, and now there's nothing in here. There is also a Water and a Wind Cave. It's down. Uh, but you don't have to go in them. We can just... There are items nearby them, but we don't have to go inside of them, so we can, like, not have to worry about that there. Right. Hopefully, I've... Whoa, fight. Sometimes you do just get fights like this, where, like, you just have three of them there and you can't do anything about it. Right, I'm going to at least take one... I, like, we need to take a couple of them out of the turn order. There. Big rock damage. And this enemy should be down. There we go. 
There's actually elementals for every type of element in this game. Uh, but in this speedrun, we only see a couple of them. There, there are dark elementals, like uh, electricity elementals and things like that. There's ones for every type. Because uh, there is a, like a type chart in this game. Does it really come up in speedrun? I went the wrong way. Of course I did. I bet you it's going to be one screen up and I've just wasted all my time. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely getting myself bodied there. This is the Easter Island head. This is what we were looking for. With a big head. There we go. And I've got that. Now I've got Right. Of course it was up. I thought all the enemies did not need to fight any of them. That was actually a good layout. I just didn't trust it. Right, we got the bag of salmon. So as you see, we've got a bag of yarn, a uh, bag of salmon, and whatever. I can't remember what it is from the rock cave. Right, there's actually a bag over here we need to grab. This is a wind nip. We have collected a bunch of things. We're going to go back to our, to our friend Warlick now. Still got a summoning. There we go. And now we're going to summon a creature. Say hello to the Doom Kitten. Summon the Doom Kitten, and now he's found the egg, and now he doesn't want us to have an egg, so we're going to kill the Doom Kitten, guys. Sadly, we do have to body the uh, cat over here. So hopefully this is a two-turner. Oh, this is a two-turner, but a slow two-turner. Okay. Right, now we need to grab the egg from this guy. The egg, we now have the egg. Also, uh, I've been skipping going to Falcon Reach via this button the entire time because I haven't actually completed Oak Law yet. So I can't actually teleport there. But I can teleport to Falcon Reach through that method because of course I can. Right. Now, we're going to go hatch our egg. So we're going to pick an egg first. We want, uh, let's go, I like the green one. There we go, that's the egg I want. Right. You have to leave the cave to go activate the cutscene, then time comes up at the end of the cutscene. We're going to go to the hatching. Here we go. Right, so we're going to try loads of different things to hatch the egg, but nothing works. Um, and yeah, those are the two main villains that's, uh, it's, I can't remember. The, it's Drakaf and Drakaf boss, I can't remember his name, but I, even if I could, I can never pronounce it. Uh, they hatch this wonderfully shiny, uh, shiny, shiny dragon, which he turns into a Draco Lich, because of course he does. And uh, we've got our lovely dragon here. So time is coming up in a little bit here. After dragon hatch. Also, there's no music because, of course, they didn't add music here. Here's our cute little dragon. And there we go. And that is time. Now we've got our cute little dragon here. And what you can do with this dragon is um, you can feed it. You can change its element. You can do whatever you like with it. Uh, there is also a training feature with like a big boy dragon um that you can do and you can train um yeah this game has three massive story arcs which uh go on for loads of time in arc one arc two is not as long um but yeah uh this yeah so it's got a timeline here as well which is also just as long there's a lot of content in this game if uh you want to give it a go a lot of fun as well, yeah. So we're, we're currently here. I, I've not actually played that up to this part casually in a good while. Uh, but yeah, the story in this game does kind of go go hella places. Uh, so if you want to try this game out, uh, it is free. There is a free-to-play version of it if you don't want to pay any money. And there is like an upgrade thing if you want to do that. But play the free version of it. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you enjoy Dragon Fable. Um, oh, yeah, it says it's playful. Uh, he can have different statuses based on his current mood. Uh, you can interact with it, but you can't interact with it. But yeah. Hopefully you enjoy Drag Dragon Fable. Um, yeah. If you want to follow me, I speedrun on Rebel Dragon 95 on Twitch. Uh, I speedrun other RPGs, mostly KH games, and I speedrun Yakuza games as well. And sometimes I play Mimi, Mimi silly stuff like this every now and then. So uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed and hope you enjoy whatever comes up next on uh, this marathon.